Oh, folks, this isn't a problem. Not a problem? Bro, you're drinking as many coffees as I drink Yates. That much caffeine has to be lethal or something. Okay, first off, I'm pretty sure caffeine is the healthiest thing in yeast. There's water in there too, probably. Second, it's obviously not lethal because I'm fine. You're fine, so far. Wait, what? Humans do have a point of caffeine consumption, where the chemical can reach a dangerous level. Ha, see? Bro, you, you gotta cut back on that stuff, man. Ah. See, Bean agrees with our flawless logic. All right, you asked for this. Don't talk to me until I've had my morning coffee. I'm just not the same until I've had my coffee. There are enough sayings about the mystical, energizing capabilities of coffee that it should be obvious that I'm not exactly the only one who has a love of the stuff. Uh, if by love you mean addiction. According to the British Coffee Association, two billion cups of coffee are consumed daily, worldwide. And who oh boy, I'm doing my part towards that number. But with such widespread popularity, it leads one to ask, is there a harmful level of coffee? Well, yes, there is. Wait, what? I didn't think you'd ever admit it. And would you believe that I'm nowhere close to it? Wait, what? Today's topic involves an unhealthy consumption level of a common beverage. We're definitely not saying that you shouldn't drink coffee, because everyone on this coffee-themed channel drinks coffee. Surprise! But make sure that you drink your coffee in moderation with everything else. Remember, even water can be harmful in large enough doses, like the ocean. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. But before we get into how this beautiful, Dark roasted ambrosia can hurt you. How exactly does it keep you awake? Good vibes. Sort of. Caffeine is actually gasoline and we're secretly cars. Uh, what? <laughs> Beans on the right track. <laughs> to understand the magical, wakeful properties of coffee, we first need to understand how sleepiness works or where that drowsy feeling that we're all so familiar with comes from. The culprit is a chemical that's produced by physical work and intense brain usage called adenosine. Adenosine, when released, accumulates in adenosine receptors in the brain, which then give the signal to the brain that, hey, getting tired up here, and promote muscle relaxation and sleepiness. I'm not sure I really follow. Think of it like a lock and a key. We have receptors in our brain that act as the lock, and chemicals that act as the key. And they unlock sleepiness? Yes, which is where coffee comes in. Coffee, as you may have guessed, is what we would call a stimulant in that, you know, it gives us life. Er, I mean, it stimulates our body. And the active ingredient in that stimulation would be caffeine. Caffeine has a similar structure to adenosine, which means for most people, it also gets stuck in the same receptors, preventing the adenosine from properly interfacing. So it's kind of like a key that unlocks energy instead. No, no, it's more like shoving the wrong key into the lock. It's jamming up the lock and preventing too much adenosine from unlocking that sleepy feeling. Caffeine has a couple of other effects on your brain while it's up there occupying those adenosine receptors. First, its presence results in adrenaline production, which, being the fight or flight hormone, results in a sudden burst of energy. Kind of like how the addition of nitrous to a car results in a burst of speed. How does Brew know about nitrous? What I tell you, we're secret cars. Wake up, sheeple. Adrenaline increases your heartbeat, increases blood pressure to get that blood circulating, and expands air passages in your lungs, among other functions to get your body ready for action. But caffeine does more than just prevent your brain from realizing you're tired and cause increased adrenaline production. It also causes higher level of the feel-good chemical, dopamine. That's right, coffee scientifically makes you happier. Can't you tell? <laughs> gotcha. But that's just the brain. Caffeine can affect your body as well. In fact, there have been studies that claim that caffeine can be beneficial to physical performance when it comes to athletics. An article in ACSM's Health and Fitness Journal stated that caffeine has been found to improve both work output and time to exhaustion for endurance activities like swimming or cycling. 
The article also quotes studies that report caffeine increases maximum strength, number of repetitions, and total volume of exercise while reducing pain and force loss in resistance exercises like weightlifting. In fact, caffeine has so strongly been connected to enhanced athletic performance that high caffeine levels got you banned from all Olympic events from 1984 to 2004. And while elite athletes can now enjoy a nice cup of coffee before their games, NCAA athletes can be disqualified from games if they reach a level of 15 micrograms per milliliter of caffeine within their bodies. What do you need to drink to reach that? About five cups of coffee within a few hours. But that said, there's gotta be some kind of downside to this miraculous life-giving drink, right? Right. Right. Okay, fine. Yes, there are downsides. It's not actually ambrosia. It has drawbacks. Firstly, this may surprise you, but your brain isn't that stupid. It can tell when caffeine has jammed its dumb, not-matching key into the brain's sleepiness locks. And it's not a fan. So when you keep drinking coffee, the brain responds in the only passive-aggressive way it knows how to. It makes more adenosine receptors. For regular coffee drinkers who have noticed that they need more and more cups to get the same wakeful feeling, this is the reason. You're actively fighting your brain's attempts to feel sleepy. And the more receptors it makes, the more caffeine you need to flood the brain with in order to fill them up. This also means that without caffeine, you're going to experience some unpleasant withdrawal symptoms. Within two days of quitting cold turkey, as it were, you might experience the expected sleepiness, but you'll also experience some headaches and nausea. Certainly not the worst withdrawal symptoms you can go through, but still unpleasant. In addition to that, caffeine has a host of other side effects. If you've ever had a few cups of coffee, you're probably aware of the jitters, that annoyingly energetic feeling that can leave you shaking. But on top of that, having excessive coffee can lead to insomnia, restlessness, dehydration, anxiety, headaches, dizziness, rapid heartbeat, and uh, gastrointestinal distress. And that's before we get to how coffee can be life-threatening. August 2007, Jasmine Willis had only gotten five hours of sleep, an hour more than I get on any given night, before having to work at her father's sandwich bar. Feeling a little sleepy and working as a barista, Willis decided to wake herself up with some much needed caffeine, though with something a bit more powerful than a regular cup of joe. According to Willis, I decided to have a double espresso to perk me up. It did the trick. So I had one after another and they seemed to be working. I felt great, as if I could take on the world. By noon, she was crying and laughing uncontrollably before being sent home. Then she developed a fever, heart palpitations, and struggled to breathe. Willis had overdosed on caffeine. When looking at caffeine doses, we have to note that caffeine has a half-life of around five hours. So reaching a lethal dose of it is something you have to do quickly. And what is that lethal dosage? Well, it works out to approximately 150 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So. I weigh 180 pounds, which translates to about 84.6 kilograms. Round it down. An average cup of coffee contains about 150 milligrams per caffeine, which means I would have to drink around 84 cups of coffee within a short period to hit a lethal dose of caffeine, which is just actually impossible. My stomach does not have enough space for that. Do you just know that? Of course. I like to keep tabs on the lethal dose of any kind of substance I consume. Did you know that consuming over 4 liters of water can result in head pain, spasms, nausea, or even seizures or loss of life? Everything can kill you. Everything. Apples and oranges contain cyanide! You can measure radiation in bananas! Your oxygen environments are dangerous! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Right. Yes. But Willis's issues weren't that she was drinking regular cups of coffee. First off, she was 17 at the time. Second, she was unaccustomed to drinking coffee. And third, she was not just drinking espresso, but unknown to her, double espresso. After seven double espressos, the equivalent of 14 cups of coffee, she experienced manic laughter, crying, fever, heart palpitations, and difficulty in breathing. This led to Willis being admitted to the University Hospital of North Durham. Thankfully, she made a full recovery, though the effects lasted into the next day. 
<laughs> Which all goes to show that what we should really be thankful for is me just drinking regular coffee, and not some kind of caffeine-added uh, super drink. Ah, uh, yeah. Why? We did a whole episode on that stuff, you know? So, in summary, yes, caffeine can be harmful, but in the doses that most adults drink it, is fine. And sure, maybe I enjoy a liter or two more coffee a day than your average enthusiast, but so long as I watch my own health and don't start gulping down cups of espresso, there's no way I can hit a lethal dosage. There. You happy now? Explanation acceptable. Okay, fine. But can you stop leaving coffee cups everywhere? I mean, how dare you? This is pretty gross, actually. Okay, look, I'll do the dishes, okay? You know what? Maybe it is time for a change in habit. From now on, I'm going to be mindful and wash how much I drink. Oh, whoops, I muted myself. Happy birthday, bro. Huzzah! So, uh, first question. How do you take your coffee? Coffee? Oh, I prefer it black. 